Welcome back. This is another Python in Excel video. I've got a challenge here from this Excel BI LinkedIn account and it's Power Query Challenge 161. So you can go and find that and, and try the challenge yourself if you want. I'm going to solve it with Python. It's an interesting challenge. It's actually quite difficult, I think, as far as these challenges go. Uh, let's just walk through what the instructions are. So for each group, find the maximum occurring winning numbers within a period of seven weeks. So if first period is 2023-10, so that's week 10 in 2023, then the range will be 2023-10 to 2023-03. Now, the first thing I notice about that is that that is actually eight periods and not seven periods. Also note week numbers are discontinuous in group B and C. We can see in group B here, it goes week 18, 12, 11, and then four. And in C, we've got a gap here between 31 and 27 and between 26 and 21. So we've got to be aware of those gaps. And we need to note that it will go from one in one year, week one in 2024. The previous week is week 52 in 2023. So simple math where we just subtract from, from this number to get the number that we need to uh, create the range will not work. If seven periods are not available, then the answer will be blank. So on the starting row nine here, uh, there has to be, has to go back to 2023-43 for seven. It said seven, but it actually needs to be eight. In group A, the last entry is 2023-44. So if we start here, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight would take us into group B. So from that point onwards, from 2023-50 onwards, there are no results. So that's what that means. Let's have a look at the first one, 2024-05. Let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are the winning numbers we're looking at. And then we want to find the winning number with the highest frequency. So there are two ones, there's one two, there are two fours, and there are three fives. And because there are three fives, the max occurred number is five for that first row. Let's look at the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are the winning numbers we need to look at. There are two ones, one, two, one, three, two fours, and two fives. So each of one, four, and five have a count of two. So the answer here is one, four, five. And it continues like that, and they always operate within each group. So Given that that's a description of the problem, let's see one way we can solve it with Python. All right, let's do this. So let's create a Python cell in J1. And the first thing to do is to get the data into a data frame. That is as simple as selecting the data like that. So there's a copy of the data. It's now a data frame. So the first thing to do is to convert this column into a string and split it into a four digit year and a two digit week. And we can do that with a single line, thankfully. I don't need to do that in the formula bar. Let's do it over here. We'll do that with a single line and it will be uh, DF. And we're creating two columns and the new columns are going to be called adjusted year and adjusted week. And those are the new column names, and they are going to be based on this calculation. So we'll get the week no column, and we will convert it to a string with as type str. And we will then use the string accessors to, uh, to allow us to act independently on each uh, row item. And we'll use the extract method. And the extract method allows a regular expression, which I don't uh, know off by heart, but I'm going to copy it from my other screen. Let's put it there. And this is essentially two capture groups, one capture group for each column we're creating. A capture group is indicated by parentheses. This first capture group says digits four. So four digits, the first four digits from the week number will go into the adjusted year column. And the second capture group is just one or more digits after the first four digits. And that will go into the adjusted week column. So we will be splitting essentially into adjusted year and adjusted week. And we don't want them as strings. We want them as integers um, because we need to do some math on them. So I'll do as type int at the end. And let's have a look at what that has done. It's created adjusted year and adjusted week. So 2024.05 is now adjusted year 2024 and adjusted week five. So I keep saying the word adjusted too many times. Uh, what we need to do is subtract from the adjusted week seven weeks. So adjusted week um, 
we can use this syntax to adjust, uh, subtract directly from that column. And that now gives us some negative weeks. We need to, for this example, this should say 2023. Of course it should, because we're going backwards from, from the fifth week of 2024. And this should say 50. So we need to add 52 to the adjusted week column and subtract one from the adjusted year column. And we can do that again with one line. Um, we can do it like this. So we will locate df.loc and we want to locate uh, df. Uh, my goodness, what is wrong with my typing? Adjusted week. Where that is less than one, we want to get the two columns that we want to change. So these are the two columns we want to change. We put those in there. So we've now located those two columns for all of the rows where adjusted week is less than one. So that's these and this. Uh, and that's it. And then we want to do a calculation and we're going to subtract from those columns one from the first column. So one from adjusted year, we'll subtract one from that. And we are going to add 52 to the second column. So we will subtract negative 52. Um, and that has the effect of doing this. So now we have from the fifth week in 2024, seven weeks before that is the 50th week of 2023. So we're getting somewhere. We now need to create a column that is in the same format as this week no column. And we can do that in many ways. This is the way I'm going to do it. Um, adjusted week number will be adjusted year dot as type string plus df dot adjusted week dot as type string. Now let me just show you what it looks like when I do that. There's the new column. This is all good, six digit, all very good. This is not good. So because the week number is only a single digit, it has created the wrong adjusted week number. Um, we need to pad the week number with zeros in, in order for this to be 2024.05 and 2024.04. We need to pad it with zeros. And we do that like this. We use the string accessor to use the string properties and functions. And we use the zero fill function and we pad it with two zeros. And then we convert the entire thing for both columns to integers. Uh, sorry, we convert the entire thing to an integer at the end. And that gives us 2024.05 as it should and 2023.50. And this is all good. We're making progress. Great. Let's scroll that back across so we can see what we're doing. Okay. So there are lots of ways of doing this. But the way that I am going to calculate the result is using a group by on the data frame and then applying a function to each of the groups independently. So the function that I write will be applied to group A, then group B, then group C. So then we don't have to think about the transition from one group to another. It just, it's just handled automatically. So the first thing to do is to create a column for the result to go in. And I'm going to set it to an empty string because that's what it looks like in the output. And then we're going to have a, a function called do group for want of a better name and it will accept a data frame. And for now, I'm just gonna put print empty string because we'll define the logic in a moment. After the function, we're going to use it and we're going to use it like this. We're going to create a new data frame, which will be df group and it will be df.group by, and we're going to apply, oops, no, we're going to uh, group by the group column and we are going to apply the do group function. So let's define the logic in this function. First of all, we want to iterate through the rows. Let's just focus on uh, group A to begin with. We're going to iterate through the rows one by one. And for each row, we're going to grab the week number and the adjusted week number. So in this case, uh, week five of 24 and week 50 of 23, we're going to grab those two. And then we are going to filter the group where, where it is le uh, less than or equal to the week number or week number is greater than or equal to the adjusted week number. So it will filter it to these rows. And we're gonna grab these numbers from those rows and create a frequency table. So it will say number five has three, number four has two, number two has one, and number one has two. So that will be the frequency table. And from that, we will uh, grab the maximum count, which will be three because there are three fives. And then we will filter this uh, will filter the frequency table for those items whose count is the maximum count. So for those items whose count is three in the case of this first uh, example. It will become clear as we type it through, but let's do it now. So 
let's iterate for index row in df uh, group df dot rows that is an iterator it allows us to go one by one through the rows in the data frame and the next thing we are going to grab the winnings so that will be the winning column that you can see highlighted there and it will be group df and we're going to filter group df and on group df dot weak no is greater than or equal to the value on the current row in the adjusted weak no column and because we need to put boundaries above and below so when when it's greater than or equal to the current row adjusted weak number and when it's less than or equal to the current row uh, weak number so those are the boundaries and then to get just the winning number column we can just put this at the end that will just get the winning number uh, column from the results of that filter that's a mouthful okay so the next thing is to create that frequency table that i talked about and that's actually pretty simple you just go winnings dot value counts open and close paren and the value counts is an index data frame but i need it to be sorted uh, in order for the output to come out in the way that i want it here and so by sorting it it will create a list of tuples and i'm going to call that list of tuples items and freak.items. So that is now a list of tuples where the first row, the value is one and the count is two. The next row, the value is two and the count is one. The next row, the count, the value is four and the count is two. And on the final row, the value is five and the count is three. And what we're going to do is iterate through those items and check which ones meet the maximum value from that frequency table. So let's grab the maximum value from the frequency table um, like this, which is just max frick.values probably other ways to do it but that's good enough and we are then going to update directly the uh, max occurred number in the data frame so we can use df.at and we can use the index from the iteration and the max occurred number and that will be equal to comma space dot join this is like the text join function in excel and it will be string of the value for the value and the count in the items if the count is equal to the max oops max value this is getting kind of confusing strictly speaking because i'm using count in one term and value in another but hopefully you get what i mean on the first row we are iterating through the items on the first row v is equal to one and c is equal to however many ones there are which is two and we check if c which is two is equal to max value. I've called it max value. Let's call it, change it to max count to make it better and easier to understand. So the max count is five, is three, sorry, because there are three fives. So on the first row, there are two ones. So if two uh, is not equal to five, then we don't do anything with it. And the only time that we join it with the comma and the space is where the count that on the generator is equal to the max count and that's only for five and that's how you produce this result here so we are updating the max code number column in that way row by row within the group so let's just do this in fact so you can see that it's actually produced the right results here but it's also produced a bunch of stuff here because we didn't put a restriction saying that we can only do this calculation if there are um, eight weeks available uh, ending in the week on the current row. So in the case of 2023-50, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the eighth week would be 2023-43, but there is no eighth week in group A. So that row is blank. Similarly, everything below that is also blank. Now, the way that we can do that in this process is to say where the adjusted week number, which is this column here, where the adjusted week number is less than the minimum week number, then don't do anything. So first of all, let's calculate the min week num. We, min week no is just min of group df week no. And then iterate through the rows, but only do it if row dot adjusted week 
no is greater than, only do it if it's greater than or equal to min weak no. So otherwise we're just not going to do anything. I'm going to leave it blank because it's it's an empty string. It's set here. We're only going to do it if the number in this column is greater than the minimum number in this column. Uh, let's see what that looks like. Okay, that has now blanked out these. Same as here. These are now identical to this. So we're almost done. But just one thing to note is that we've got some junk columns here we can get rid of. So let's get rid of those with df dot uh, drop columns equals and we want to get rid of adjusted year uh, adjusted week and adjusted week no and we'll do it in place equals true that gives us exactly what we needed that's the end of the video <laughs> thanks for watching Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.